Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com, setting the record straight about climate. This video is titled, The Imaginary Global Warming Consensus. Margaret Thatcher understood consensus. This is how she described it. To me, consensus seems to be the process of abandoning all beliefs, principles, values, and policies. So it is something in which no one believes and to which no one objects. This is what Barack Obama said. 97% of scientists agree climate change is real, man-made, and dangerous. Unlike Margaret Thatcher, Obama used consensus as his primary argument. But there was no basis to Obama's claims. The same year that Obama made that claim, the American Meteorological Society took a survey of its professional members. Meteorologists' views about global warming. Is global warming happening? And if so, what is its cause? Yes, mostly human. All respondents, 52%. Only 52% of respondents agreed with the statement that global warming was mostly caused by humans. Among professional forecasters, only 37% believed that it was mostly human. There was no category of scientists which came anywhere close to the 97% which Barack Obama claimed. And nowhere in this survey, or any other survey which I'm aware of, were the scientists asked if the global warming was dangerous. Let's look at Obama's claim again. 97% of scientists agree climate change is real, man-made, and dangerous. There's no truth to this statement. Obama was trying to push through a political agenda. And he was abusing science and scientists in order to achieve it. Let's look at a real scientist now. Dr. Bill Gray at Colorado State University was a good friend of mine and a giant among men and a giant among scientists. Bill passed away three years ago and I took this photograph of him at lunch a few weeks before he died. Bill was a very famous climate skeptic. He was also the top tropical meteorologist in the world and the father of hurricane forecasting. He was a huge man physically, morally, and scientifically. Even the most notorious global warming alarmists recognized Bill's achievements. Bill Gray, a towering figure in hurricane science, Bob Henson and Jeff Masters. Famed hurricane researcher William Gray passed away at his home in Fort Collins, Colorado on Saturday, April 16, 2016. His death came just as colleagues were gathering in San Juan, Puerto Rico for the American Meteorological Society's 32nd Conference on Hurricanes and Tropical Meteorology, a meeting that Dr. Gray had attended regularly since the 1960s. Gray's best-known research contribution was his founding of seasonal hurricane prediction techniques, which both emerged from and led to a growing understanding of how phenomena such as El Nino and La Nina influenced the likelihood of tropical cyclones. Gray published many dozens of peer-reviewed papers, mainly in tropical meteorology. Late in his career, Gray spoke out passionately against the global consensus on climate change science, as noted in a memorial published by Colorado State University, Gray's professional home for more than 50 years. Note that Jeff Masters runs the Weather Underground website, which is full of global warming propaganda. This is one of Dr. Gray's early papers from the monthly Weather Review in October 1968. Global View of the Origin of Tropical Disturbances and Storms. This paper became the basis of much of modern tropical meteorology. Dr. Gray received funding for his research every year from NOAA for decades until 1993. In 1993, Al Gore became vice president, and he invited Dr. Gray to a global warming conference he was holding. Dr. Gray told him, I'm happy to come to your conference, but I'm not a big believer in your theories. After telling this to Al Gore in 1993, Dr. Gray never got another penny out of the government. When Al Gore became vice president, the message went out to climate scientists loud and clear. Either you go along with Gore's theories, or you lost funding. Bill was a very strong man of exceptional character. Bill refused to go along with Al Gore's lie, so he self-funded his research and his graduate students for 25 years. But very few scientists have the character, integrity, and means to do what Dr. Gray did. It's understood in climate science that if you go along with the global warming scam, you'll get lots of funding, you'll get conferences in places like Cancun, life will be good for you. 
If you don't go along with the global warming scam, your funding will get cut off. But it's much worse than that. I spent many hours in Dr. Gray's office at Colorado State University. Bill was an incredibly generous person who would talk to me for hours and hours explaining how meteorology works. But when we left his office and walked down the halls, many of his colleagues would not even make eye contact with him. Dr. Gray's skepticism was a threat to their funding. In 2013, the same year that Barack Obama declared his phony 97% consensus, his Secretary of the Interior sent out a stern warning to climate skeptics. Sally Jewell, I hope there are no climate change deniers in the Department of the Interior. This is a very clear and very illegal threat against dissent. It's reminiscent of the persecution of non-geocentricists by the Vatican in the 16th century. So far we've seen that climate skeptics lose their funding, they get ostracized, and they get threatened with termination. Climate skeptics also get personally attacked with very high-profile lies. Naomi Oreskes of Harvard University created this movie, Merchants of Doubt. I attended the premiere of this movie in Washington, D.C., a couple blocks from the White House, and I was sitting with Michael Mann and Catherine Hayhoe. The movie was 100% innuendo, trying to link climate skeptics with big oil and big tobacco. The movie never presented any evidence supporting these claims. The point of the movie was to smear climate skeptics and cast doubt about their motives and intentions. I'm friends with many of the people who were attacked in this movie and know that the movie was full of misinformation. So now we know that climate skeptics get their funding cut off, they get ostracized, they get threatened with termination, and they get character assassination. Additionally, they get threatened with prosecution. Senator Whitehouse, a Democrat from Rhode Island, wants to prosecute climate skeptics. This is straight out of the game plan of the 16th century Vatican. Other Democratic congressmen have launched investigations against climate change skeptics. Roger Pilkey Jr. out of the University of Colorado was a target of one of these Democratic congressional witch hunts. A University of Colorado professor is being investigated by a Democratic congressman from Arizona over whether he's received research funding from fossil fuel companies. Both Professor Roger Pilkey Jr. and the University of Colorado administration on Wednesday said that is absolutely not the case. There's little or no money for climate skeptics. I'm one of the best known ones and I received no funding. But there's huge amounts of money for climate alarmists. By the year 2009, there were over $2 billion being poured into climate science research by the government. And as the story of Dr. Gray shows us, if you want to get this money, you have to tow the global warming line. But the intimidation of climate skeptics doesn't stop there. A Google search for my name turns up all sorts of fraudulent websites which are being funded to discredit me. These fake websites appear at the top of a Google search for my name. Someone is spending a lot of money to make this happen. The purpose of these fake websites is to disparage me and, of course, make it difficult for me to obtain employment. It's another form of financial intimidation for those outside the scope of academia. So climate skeptics get their funding cut off. They get ostracized. They get threatened with prosecution. They get congressional investigations. They get personally attacked. They get fake websites made against them. And they get ridiculed. Barack Obama, who has no background in science, accused climate skeptics of being the Flat Earth Society. Climate skeptics are frequently compared with moon landing deniers, which is amazing considering that the only scientist to have walked on the moon, Harrison Schmidt, is a prominent climate skeptic. In fact, 49 of the top people from the Apollo program sent a letter to the NASA administrator a few years ago asking him to end their climate junk science. Many of the people with the right stuff are climate skeptics. There are Nobel Prize winners who are climate skeptics. Freeman Dyson, who the New York Times described as infinitely smart, is a prominent climate skeptic. Edward Teller, the father of the American hydrogen bomb, was a prominent climate skeptic. More than 30,000 American scientists, including more than 9,000 with PhDs, have signed the Oregon petition stating their skepticism. Climate alarmists have attempted to sabotage this petition by putting a few fake names on it. 
Their argument is that a half dozen fake names takes precedence over the 30,000 plus very real scientists. Barack Obama, who has no background in science and lies about an imaginary global warming consensus, describes these 30,000 scientists and 9,000 PhDs as being the Flat Earth Society. And the mainstream media are a big part of this scam. They openly brag about how they censor climate skeptics. The press, who are supposed to be bastions of free speech, are actually key perpetrators in the destruction of it. Let's review now how the imaginary global warming consensus is created. Defunding, ostracization, censorship, loss of employment, character attacks, threats, fake news attacks, congressional investigations, ridicule, prosecution. Very few scientists are willing or capable to withstand that sort of barrage. Dr. Bill Gray was a true giant among men. And what is the purpose of this imaginary global warming consensus? The purpose is to get people to turn off their brains. The message is that there's no need for you to think because scientists have already done the thinking for you. In fact, you're not even qualified to think about this topic. The scientific and technological elite have done the thinking for you and you have to blindly follow them over the cliff. Two days ago, the governor of Pennsylvania signed an executive order saying climate change is the most critical environmental threat facing the world, and he's going to reduce carbon pollution by 80% by the year 2050. There's never been any credible engineering study saying that these sort of goals are even remotely plausible. During the winter and at night, there just isn't much sunshine. Where is this imaginary energy going to come from? Is the governor going to reopen Three Mile Island, the nuclear reactor, which was shut down after a meltdown in the 1970s? I was working last spring in Philadelphia. It was the coldest and snowiest spring on record there. This was my next door neighbor's house on April 1st of last year. You know, Obama sign, which was half buried in snow. Global warming wasn't keeping anybody warm. Without the fossil fuels, countless people would have frozen and starved to death in the dark. What is the governor of Pennsylvania thinking of? Why aren't there engineers involved in the process of making these engineering decisions about our energy future? Climate academics and politicians have no understanding of what it takes to keep a grid running. We have exactly the wrong people making these decisions. And the governor of Pennsylvania imagines that something he's doing is affecting carbon emissions around the world. If we look at the agreement which Barack Obama actually made with China, we can see that he agreed to let them increase their CO2 emissions until the year 2030. If there really is a climate crisis, why did Obama agree to let them keep increasing their emissions? China is already the world's leader in carbon emissions much higher than the United States, and their emissions growth is skyrocketing. Meanwhile, U.S. emissions have been declining for a decade thanks to fracking. Natural gas produces less carbon dioxide per BTU than coal does. That's why our emissions are declining. And even though fracking is responsible for the reduction of our carbon emissions, progressives want to shut down fracking. So China's carbon emissions are skyrocketing. China and India have more than 1,000 new coal-fired power plants being built. Meanwhile, our emissions are declining. U.S. CO2 emissions are much lower than China. We do not control the world. Donald Trump has understood exactly what's going on for a long time. He tweeted in 2012, The concept of global warming was created by and for the Chinese in order to make U.S. manufacturing non-competitive. I don't necessarily agree with him that the concept was created by the Chinese, but the effect is exactly what he's saying. The politics of global warming hurt the United States and they helped China. Michael Crichton, the author of Jurassic Park, said, Historically, the claim of consensus has been the first refuge of scoundrels. It's a way to avoid debate by claiming that the matter is already settled. But there is no global warming consensus. Only 52% of professional members of the American Meteorological Society believe that global warming is mostly man-made. And they were never asked if they believe that global warming is dangerous. Barack Obama's claim, which is the basis of current Pennsylvania policy, was nothing but a big lie. 
If our fossil fuel supply got cut off, civilization would collapse in a matter of days. Our heat, light, transportation, communications, and food supply are all completely dependent on fossil fuel. It would be completely insane for us to shut down our energy infrastructure without first proving that we have something legitimate to replace it with. There is no global warming consensus. Skeptics are intimidated into silence. Dr. Gray was a hero and a very rare man, and on his deathbed he asked me to carry on his climate legacy. That's one of the big reasons why I do this. Visit Toto on the web at realclimatescience.com. He's been pulling back the curtain on junk science for a long time.